Welcome to the Eric Avisar Show. Virginia Tech football picked up its first win of the season, albeit in unconvincing fashion, taking down Old Dominion 34-17 in Lane Stadium. It was the home opener for the Hokies and Virginia Tech really wanted to win and win huge. This was a revenge game. Virginia Tech was absolutely embarrassed by Old Dominion last season. And a lot of people, including myself, really wanted to see at least 60 points scored and have the Hokies cover the uh, 28 point spread. However, that was not the case. Virginia Tech uh, struggled in many ways. Although, let's get to the good stuff first. Ezekiel Grimsley's touchdown reception was nothing short of spectacular. Incredible concentration, just corralling the ball, the speed of the ball, with it one hand, bobbling it, bringing it in just before uh, hitting the ground. Wonderful touchdown reception. Might end up being, frankly, Virginia Tech's play of the season. There is no question that Virginia Tech has an exciting receiving core with players like Grimsley, Trey Turner, who probably has the most promising future, Phil Patterson, and Tavion Robinson. It's exciting to have a team with real quality playmakers. However, the problem remains the same for Virginia Tech at the quarterback position. Ryan Willis is still not an ACC caliber quarterback. He improved since his first game against Boston College last week. However, uh, that's not saying much. Willis was not good enough last season. He's not good enough this season. He makes poor decisions. He turned the ball over again, losing a fumble. He didn't throw an interception this time, which is a big reason why I say he had a better performance this time around. And he even found the end zone with his legs. He's an underrated runner. But at the end of the day, he just does not have what it takes. And my gut's starting to tell me that Hendon Hooker and Quincy Patterson don't have it either. It hurts to watch Josh Jackson tearing it up at Maryland when he could still be a Hokey. I don't know why he left. Those things usually go on behind the scenes, but there's no question this Virginia Tech team would be better with Josh Jackson. Much better. Keyshawn King once again impressed me with his limited work. He is a true freshman, and I thought he should have gotten the ball a lot more. He only had six carries compared to Deshaun McLeese's 20 carries. Now, McLeese lost a fumble and was not benched. King was benched because apparently Fuente was worried that he might fumble. So Justin Fuente making questionable decisions, benching guys that he is concerned might fumble as opposed to guys who actually fumble. And there's no question King is the most talented running back on this team and he must carry the ball more. No question about that. Defensively, it was another painful performance filled with missed tackles and schematic errors. The Hokies paid time and time again for not putting a spy on Stone Smart. He ran for too many first downs with the defensive backs, uh, backs turned to him. And while Dax Holyfield struggled, credit to Old Dominion for coming up with a great game plan to neutralize him in particular. Rayshard Ashby may end up being the rock of the defense. He's led the team in tackles for the second straight game and the only player to put up double-digit tackles in each of the first two games. It was great to see Eric Kuma and Chris Cunningham get shut down. You know, both really didn't have much to say in this game. And that would have really hurt considering Old Dominion had the temerity, the gall to captain them. It was... Uh, Pretty petty. It was quite the troll job there, but Virginia Tech got it done. You want to be happy. You want to be satisfied. Of course, there is uh, a level of happiness that comes with any Virginia Tech win, just knowing that they came out on top. But more than anything, this is a reminder that this could be a very difficult, long season. Buckle up, Hokies, and let's hope for the best. Thank you so much for tuning in, and please subscribe to my channel.